sporty World Cup greetings to all of our Voice America viewers and listeners. Welcome to On Goal with Sonny and Muckbill. Sonny, how's it going, man? Great, Muckbill. Great to be back here in Studio 2 for Episode 2. And it looks like you've got some different colors on your chest, Muckbill. Yeah, I had to switch it up a little bit. Um, Spain, after what they did to Costa Rica, I thought it was very fitting. 7-0. <laughs> well, Muckbill, I've got some Spanish ties uh, this evening also. Why don't you tell us about your jersey right over there? Malaga FC, they're a second-tier team in Spain. And uh, my son gave me this jersey. He taught in Spain for a little while. So uh, shout-out for Malaga in Spain's second uh, division. As we speak, Muckbill, all five African teams have seen action in Qatar at the World Cup. Uh, why don't you run down the results? Absolutely. Um, so we had um, one win, two draws, and three losses for the African team. One win and one loss for Senegal. One draw for Tunisia. One draw for Morocco. One loss for Cameroon and a loss for Ghana as well. Um, I would definitely have to say that Senegal match was it is the first win for the African teams. 3-1 against Qatar. Big win. Big win. Huge. And uh, the, the Lions of Taranga still in contention for a knockout round uh, appearance. And it would be great to see them advance. No, absolutely. I, I feel as though a lot of the African teams have played well. Unfortunately, they haven't got the results that they would have liked. Um, Ghana against Portugal, an amazing effort by the Black Stars. Um, definitely, we, we will definitely keep talking about uh, all these African teams. We have online Abdurrahman Dia, live from Dakar, Senegal. Abdurrahman, how is, Hello. how is the energy in Senegal after that Qatar win for Senegal? Well, uh, it is very different from what we saw on Monday when Senegal lost 2-0 against the Netherlands. Tonight, people are celebrating. They have been celebrating since the end of the game today uh, against Qatar. Uh, very joyful, uh, very festive, really, and a sense of relief that, you know, the team has a chance to move on. So uh, people are really relieved. Uh, that is actually the word. Uh, because at some point during the game, at least until Bulaija delivered that, that, that goal, uh, you know, people were starting to have some doubt. Will they be able to score? Because they were having a lot of opportunity, but they were missing them. So after that, people were really, you know, they just let it go. All flags out, you know, uh, scarves. People really are out right now at night. I'm in the middle of downtown Dakar and people are really out celebrating. Sporty World Cup greetings, Abdul Rahman, Sonny Young here in Studio 2. As we look at the Group A standings, Abdul Rahman, uh, the Netherlands and Ecuador at the top with four points from two matches. Senegal right behind them with three points from two matches. Host Qatar has been eliminated. What's your sense among Senegalese football fans about the Lions of Taranga advancing to that knockout stage. They will close group play against Ecuador. And you're absolutely right. It is true that people are celebrating their victory today, but they were watching with great interest what was going on in that other game between uh, the Netherlands and, uh, and uh, Ecuador. And, you know, they, that was not the, the result that they were hoping. They were all ruling here for uh, the Netherlands. But uh, I think it is like a, a source of motivation now. They know that uh, the team have to win. And many here really think that it is possible because um, they were praising uh, the coach, Alun say for trusting, uh, you know, young players like Iliman Jai. And they said that is the winning goal. Saïd Omani not being here. They have to rely on the young players and give them the opportunity to show, to show off and really to bribe. Absolutely. Uh, Abdurrahman, I definitely agree with you. Um, as much as it would have been lovely for the Dutch to win for the Senegal side, I definitely believe that it was still a better outcome than if the Ecuador side um, would have won. Now, if Ecuador Absolutely. would have won, Senegal would be in a very, very difficult situation. How do you feel like this Senegal side matches up against um, Ecuador and what we've seen from Ecuador so far? 
Well, Ecuador is a strong team. They play together. You know, the fact that they don't have like a big star is, I was saying the other day, is maybe a good good thing for them because now it's the whole team playing together and Senegal is kind of in the same position. They have to rely on each other. And many people here think that, you know, it is possible they can win against Ecuador, but this team is very strong. But the fact that Senegal won today against Qatar, which is the, the host country, you know, is is giving an extra motivation for everybody, not only the fans, but I'm sure the team as, as well, because they want to move on to the next round. But Ecuador is a team to be taken very, very seriously. Abdul Rahman, Ali Usise captain Senegal at the 2002 World Cup in Japan and South Korea. Now he's one of five local coaches leading African teams in Qatar. What's your sense about Sise? and uh, how important he is to the success of the Taranga Lions in Qatar. It's one of the stories, isn't it, uh, to have the five teams being coached by, you know, local, uh, local uh, technicians is something that really stands out. And Alan Sisse has been uh, with the team for many years now, and I think it is a personal uh, success story, not only for him, but a way to show many African countries that it is we have maybe the team the people to to lead those teams and it is just uh you know it could get really better if he makes it to the second round i think so yeah i think from now on it's going to be something that we will see more and more often in africa you know people relying on african cultures uh, abdurrahman do you feel as though the big story now is still sadi omani missing out on senegal um, or with Enner Valencia being the lead top scorer in the tournament so far with three goals going up against Senegal and how he matches up against uh, Kalubali. Um, wh what are your thoughts on that matchup? <laughs> well, uh, many people here trust Kulibali. And as for, as for Sadio Mane, I think people have now moved on. You know, they were shocked especially after the, the first game against the Netherlands. Really, people did miss him. Now, I think they know that he won't be here. They're going to have to do without him. People have kind of moved on, really, if, if I can rely on what people are saying on local media and on the streets as well. Abdul Rahman, um, where do you rate Edward Mendy among the goalkeepers in Qatar? I was saying earlier to my colleague in the French service that actually... Uh, Mendy today kind of reconciled with, uh, you know, the fans to, because the first game he was criticized heavily by the team. They thought that he was the one who caused Senegal the, you know, the, the, the game. Today, really, he was praised everywhere. And I think today he did, you know, do a great game, he, a great saves. And let's hope that he stays that way. Somebody was saying earlier, uh, one of the analysts was saying, really, even though people were criticizing him, uh, it was a good move for uh, Alou Cisse to keep him, at least to give him a chance to, you know, uh, to come back. And also, even thinking about his club, Chelsea, maybe if, if he does a, a good tournament, he will go back and take back his, uh, you know, his place. Abdul Rahman Dia speaking with us from Dakar, Senegal. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. How about that? Honestly, Senegal, the first African team to have gotten a victory in the tournament so far. Do you think this is the first team and only team that'll get a victory in the group stages? Sonny, what are your thoughts? I, I still think we might see a victory uh, from Ghana, Morocco, and maybe Tunisia. Uh, I know Cameroon uh, had a very tough loss in its opening match. Uh, I think that group is, is just too tough for them to get out of Muckbill with Serbia and Brazil. I think Cameroon plays, I think they play Serbia next, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, shout out for the Taronga Lions, reigning African champions. I think they were generally regarded as the strongest African team going to Qatar. And I think right now they're proving it.
No, I definitely agree with you. I feel like um, this is the perfect time to, to, to get our guy on, on, on live with us. Jackson Vugani is with us live from Accra, Ghana. Jackson. 40 greetings to you, Mobile and Sunny. <laughs> Sport, Sunny sporty, sporty World Bro, Cup greetings. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, guys? Good to see you. So the energy is still, you know, the same. Uh, the, the guys here are really excited and they're encouraged and inspired by this team, the Black Stars. They showed out yesterday, honestly. I think probably the first, it was, I think it was the first team, African team to score two goals. Uh, and they said that if it wasn't for that penalty, uh, where, you know, it was a little questionable that the, co the, the, the ref should have consulted the VR system. Uh, you know, Ronaldo was able to convert that penalty in the early, you know, in the opening minutes of, uh, of the match. That if it wasn't for that, they probably would have come up with a, either a win because there's something that, you know, psychologically happens to a team when they, they get scored on in the first couple of minutes. Uh, and if they felt it was a little unfair that the, the ref uh, and and if, if you hear the 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 the, the coach Otto Ado, who many actually blamed, they don't blame the Black Stars as a team. They said the coach made some strategic mistakes, and we'll talk about that later on. But they said that if it wasn't for that penalty, the kid, the, the Black Stars would have actually come out with a win or at least a draw, and it would have uh, been the first African win. But that was yesterday. Today we know that uh, it's a different story, and that uh, uh, Senegal has made history in this World Cup by win, being the first, uh, the first team to win in the World Cup. But you know, the energy is still up. These guys are very encouraged. They're inspired. They think that their team could, uh, could have a, really a chance in this World Cup. Jackson, that was a history-making penalty kick by Cristiano Ronaldo. And as you mentioned, lots of controversy surrounding that penalty kick. Uh, in terms of Ronaldo's stature, Jackson, do you think that might have been one of the reasons why they didn't go to video review to, to, to confirm whether it was actually a penalty that maybe, you know, his superstar status played into it? And listen, we, we, you know, that's a good point, son. And, we, and we've seen that in other sports. Uh, Mokubil and I love basketball a lot. So we know that sometimes we've complained uh, when some of these big superstars in, in the NBA, uh, you know, make a blunder or, you know, carry the ball and the, the ref will not call a walk or some of those little tiny mistakes. It's quite, it's quite possible because of his legendary status. Ronaldo is a legend, no doubt. It's quite possible because of that. They decided, you know what, or the ref decided, you know what, this guy, we're going to give him a pass and we're not going to consult. And that really was the difference maker in this game. Yeah, no, I, I definitely would uh, agree with your sentiments, Jackson. We've seen superstar calls happen across the board in different sports. Uh, and I think that definitely was one of them. Um, but I definitely love the resolve that the, the, the Ghanaian side showed being down 1-0 to Portugal, that is a very dominant and highly ranked team coming into this tournament. Um, how do you feel like they did when they tried to come back? And, and, and what are your thoughts on Mohamed Khudus, uh, the, the young superstar uh, of the Black Stars? Absolutely. Mohamed Kudus, I think, is everybody's favorite player here in, in Ghana. Everybody I've spoken to asked, <laughs> who's your favorite player? they like, Mohamed Kudus. And, you know... They have an exciting team of young players, and you know this in a way encourages uh, it, it. It shows where the future of this of this team is going in the coming years. Uh, that you know they have a young group of people of, of young players that are so talented, and they have ambition, and they, they 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 have the capacity and the potential to actually make it to the finals, even this World Cup. But you know, let's hear to. Some, some. I spoke to a couple of uh, people here right after the match when things were a little hard, sentiments were a little hard, and this is what they had to say. I'm very, very, very angry. Why, why would a, a good coach behave like this? You're you playing, you're playing a, a Portu, Portugal. These are old, old men. Pepe, Ronaldo, very old men. You mean experienced? In a, a, they are very experienced, but they don't have the energy anymore. Mm. You have the equalization now relax relax play them at least 18 minutes if you see that they are still playing being stubborn you bring the young ones who can run at them and i believe our way should have been drawn our way should have been drawn mm, two 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 
what, what are some of the things they could have done different to win this game? This game, I think the approach for the first half was, was, was good. We tested their strength. And I thought we should have continued like that, getting to the last minute. Then we will use our strength, the young ones that we have, to deal with them. That was my plan because I thought the first half was good, even though they were controlling the game. We, we were soaking them, holding them up. So I thought, second half, just continue the same thing. When getting to the 60th, 70th minute, we just see if we can run at them and cause some mistakes yeah. in them and get a point. Who was your favorite player for the game? For the game, Kudus Mohammed. Kudus Mohammed. Even though the first half, you couldn't see him, but you could see for the for, for second half. Kudus Mohammed, I know he was he is he's our man. I was I was expecting two one in favor of Ghana. Because I know the kind of the caliber of players that we have. That if we're able to keep these ones, if we're able to maintain our composure in this game, we would have we would have gotten the, the, the three points. What do I make of the match between Ghana and Portugal? I think it was a good game. The guys did so well. I loved it. Though at a point I was scared. But on a whole, they did so well. And even though Ghana didn't win, hey, the boys did amazingly well. Mohamed Kudus, the day are you? Come on. They did so well. And I'm proud of them. Kudos for yes, kudos. Cool. Kudos for kudos, kudos Jackson. Kudos for kudos. <laughs> you, know, you know, when I watched him on the pitch against Portugal, Jackson, uh, he had so much uh, creativity and ingenuity and energy and spark. And I thought he was the engine for the Black Stars of Ghana, a, a young man making his World Cup debut. Uh, I, I side with those who think uh, he should have stayed in the match. Not Absolutely. They, 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 they say, many people blame the coach. They say that uh, oh, Coach Otto Addo made a strategic blunder by removing Kudus and Ayu. It, it didn't make sense to anybody really watching the game to take out the guys that have actually scored um, and, you know, hopefully that, you know, that's something that he will change going forward. But let me just say this, you know, Portugal is ranked number nine in the world right now. Uh, it's a European powerhouse. These guys, to be able to have come up, come up with, a, you know, if you take out the, the penalty, a two on two, a draw really, you know, if you remove the penalty, that says something about this Ghanaian team. No, uh, Jackson, I, I definitely agree. I think there's more to take away from it than than the loss right being the first african teams to have scored um that's number one knowing full and well that the game was within grasp for them is, an, is another thing so they can take that energy to their second game and and who knows people were already expecting them to lose to portugal right but yeah that doesn't have to be the case for the second game or the third game now i will say this to play devil's advocate for coach adu right you have uh, you have the captain Ayu who has a yellow card, right? After his goal, he was playing very aggressive. You might want to take him off because you can't afford to have him have a red card. That's understandable. Kudus, because of the fact that Mohamed Kudus was also a such a dominant force in the game, and he is your almost Neymar-like player. Do you want him to get injured? If you're thinking that the game is going to be 1-1, you're, you're hoping to put in two fresh legs that are going to be able to sustain it for you. I don't see the move being a bad move, but when it plays out the way that it does, it looks like it's a bad move in hindsight. So, uh, I don't know. I think people should kind of take it a little easy on Coach Adu, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. I 100% agree with you. Again, you know, it's very easy to... To, to play armchair, you know, pundits out here like coaches. But honestly, when you're in the hot seat as a coach, you have the weight of the whole match on you, even, you know, more so than the players. So, I mean, he might, would you say in the heat of the moment, he probably didn't make the right decisions. But also, it's possible that he made those kind of calculations, like you said, and he said, I don't want to be down one player, even though this is my star player, let, him, let me take him out. Also, we saw what happened to Neymar, speaking of that, you know, that equivalency between these two superstars. You don't want your, you know, your, 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 your bulldog, to, so to say, to get injured when you feel like you kind of have the tactical advantage. But is that the reason that it, it cost them the game? Is, you know, again, this game is much more physical as it is mental. And some of these, these little, you know, moves that you make could cost people mentally, and it could give an advantage to the opposing team. Now, we don't know whether that is what happened in this case, but soccer is soccer. 
Jackson, the Black Stars will next play South Korea on November 28th. How do you see that match? Oh, South Korea is not easy. Okay, South Korea will run you out of the game. They do not stop they, from the beginning to the end. These guys are really fast. And, uh, you know, the Black Stars have a tough match ahead of them. But, you know, people are actually really confident. This, if anything, coming out of this match, it uh, the, actually the one team that I'm really looking forward to is Uruguay. Yeah. But for South Korea, every, every, the sentiment is that they will be able to sail past South Korea easily. But in my opinion, it might be a little tough battle. But we'll see. Man, Jackson, as you mentioned, there is a, a bit of historical uh, significance to that Uruguay team. Uh, Uruguay versus Ghana 12 years ago. Very controversial move by Suarez, who's still on the team. How do you think um, the Ghanaian people still feel about that, that, that match? I know, I know. You know, listen, the Ghanaian, everybody talks about <laughs> that. Everybody. It was a move they feel like stole the World Cup. It's like they had been, it's, it's like they had qualified for the, for the finals and somebody just snatched it. But it, they weren't even going to the finals. But listen, there's beef, okay? There's beef. And Suarez <laughs> better be ready because these guys, I think I think everybody's looking at Suarez more than anybody else. And the fact that, you know, he's still one of the players that is there. I was talking to some, to, to, to the guy that I spoke to earlier. I'm like, listen, is it possible that these young players that are part of the Black Stars right now do not have that memory, that institutional memory of what happened at the time? And the guy's like, no, nobody forgets. Nobody <laughs> forgot. Everybody, whether you're on the pitch or not, you remember Suarez snatching that defeat out of our hands. And listen, you better watch out, Suarez. <laughs> Black Stars are going to you. <laughs> Well, Jackson, the Black Stars have, I, I think I read where they might have the youngest team in Qatar. I think uh, they're, the average age on the Black Stars is like 24. Uh, do you get the sense after that result against Portugal, uh, granted a loss, but it was a hard-fought loss, do you, get, do you think that's going to inspire them against South Korea and Uruguay? Listen, these guys do not play young. If you watch the game like we all did, these guys look like veterans on that pitch, okay? They were playing one of the most dominant uh, players in Ronaldo, one of the most dominant teams in Portugal, number nine, ranked number nine, and they were able to put on a fight. You know, you could see some of the moves they were making. These are not new to this, you know, and they dominated really in many ways this game. And honestly, I think that they are going into the South Korea game with that confidence, uh, with that bravado that they can do it. I think they needed this. They, if it would have been nice to get that win, but I think just getting the two goals and that's just looking from from us the way they were playing. I feel like they had they they have what it takes to to get far to get far. Would I say they are going to win the World Cup? Really not. But would I say they they got they'll come close to the twenty to to the the Alia Black Stars? Yes. Jackson, thank you so much, man. I'm loving the energy, brother. I'm hoping you're enjoying yourself, and we definitely will be checking back in with you. Jackson Vugani, man, from from uh, he's in Ghana at the moment, from Accra, Ghana, Accra, Ghana. Um, we will be right back. It is the biggest sports event of the year, the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. Join VOA to celebrate Africa's king sport. In-depth coverage... Breakout stars, Cinderella teams, coaches, players, and let's not forget the fans from the four corners of the continent and from the city of Doha. Don't miss the fun with Team VOA Africa. Let's experience the magic of football together. We are back. We are back. So much exciting football to talk about. Sonny, what, what are your thoughts, man? What are your thoughts on, on, on what we've been discussing today and what we got coming forward, man? Well, uh, I, I agree. You know, the Ronaldo is a big, a big uh, name in the tournament. Uh, we still have Messi. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think we could still see some goals from him, which leads me to best goals so far in Qatar. I think I might have to go with Richarlison against Serbia. That was Brazil's second goal. Absolutely spectacular. You were describing it to me, Muckbill, earlier. What did he do? Sonny, honestly, that, that 
that goal was pure class. Vinny Jr. crosses the ball to him. He just does a slight chip shot. The ball comes right about almost shoulder level. And he just knows instinctually what to do with it. And just goes up for what looked to me like a scissors kick yep. and bicycle kick hybrid. I don't even know what it was, but it, but it, it was lovely. And it was at the back of the net, man. It was, it was a beautiful goal. Uh, definitely in the conversation for one of the better goals of the tournament so far. Yeah, what, what really uh, stunned me was his reaction time right. after, after he controlled the ball, how, he, how quickly he kicked it. Yeah, and, and, and that's the, the beauty of watching Masterclass when it comes to, uh, to, to these experienced players uh, on, on such a grand scale. You have somebody who just in a split second is able to, to know what to do in order to get the, the ball in the back of the net. It was, it was amazing. Very acrobatic. Now, my second favorite goal in Qatar comes from a Saudi player, Al Dawsari, and the Saudis uh, pulled off the biggest upset so far in the tournament, coming back with two second-half goals to uh, just really uh, upset Argentina and, and Lionel Messi. But talk about Al Dawsari's goal. Man, his goal was so beautiful because of... The it was such a tight space. He had to find an opening, swung it a little bit to his right side. He was on the left side of the pitch, and he really went for a curve at the top, upper right 90. The goalie got his hands on it, just wasn't enough. Back of the net, classic goal, very class. Funny, funny story. Um, MBS is reportedly said to have wanting to buy each of the players from the Saudi Arabia team, a Rolls Royce Phantom wow. for their win against Argentina. Wow. I'm not counting out. Unbelievable. I'm not counting out Lionel Messi in Argentina. I think uh, sentimentally, a, a lot of football fans, they want to see that team uh, in the knockout stages of this tournament. Uh, your thoughts, Muck Bill? Yeah, I, I definitely think that they're one of the teams that um, have a very big um, – fan base across all continents and all people. Um, Germany's another one that is uh, that lost to Japan, who find themselves in a bit of a struggle situation tr trying to come out of that group with Spain and Japan now with three points each. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, group stages this year has been very exciting, to say the least bit. Um, but we're, we're definitely excited. We will keep you all up to date with everything that we have coming up. Top goal scorers quickly are, I would say... Valencia. Valencia with three goals. Saka uh, with two goals. Gerard with two goals. And Richarlison with two goals. There's a bunch of other stars that have two goals as well. But, man, this is exciting, Sonny. Iran has a victory. Saudi Arabia has a victory. Tunisia and Morocco have draws. What impact is it to be... I won't say they're playing on home turf, Muck Bill, but... I think they feel comfortable playing in the Middle East. They, they, they must feel, because they're showing us a great performance so far. Fortunately, the host country, Qatar, even though they are an Arabic-speaking country as well, have found their way out of the tournament, unfortunately for them. But uh, we'll definitely keep, uh, keep everyone up to date on our next podcast. Stay tuned on On Goal with Sonny and Muckbill. Again, Muckbill, we have two more African teams on the pitch, we have uh, Tunisia and Morocco. Tunisia plays Australia. Uh, how do you see that match? Tunisia and Australia, I definitely feel like Tunisia could come away with the victory. Um, as we've seen, Australia had that first initial goal against France, but outside of that, they were playing defense and didn't really have any more great shots at goal. So th could this be the match for Tunisia to get their three points? It's possible. The Moroccans have a tough match, Muck Bill. They, they go up against Belgium. Uh, Belgium edge Canada 1-0 in their opener. How do you see uh, Belgium-Morocco? Belgium's probably the tougher team in that group, so it's going to be a bit difficult. Um, but, yeah, as we said, we will be back next week on, on goal with Sonny and Muck Bill. Have a good one.